guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, it's time, guys, and I apologize for the delay, but we are gonna do an Animal Kingdom itinerary game plan video designed for families who have younger kids. Now, I have done this video before, I do believe, for Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, and I do have itinerary game plan videos for all four parks for just the average kind of family person, but a lot of you were asking me for videos designed especially for the younger set, right? So if you're going to Disney World with, I would say, I don't know, like age five or six and under, those kids who really want to focus on characters and kiddie rides and not so much coasters and thrill, this video is for you. If you are looking for more uh, video, more for the general family, maybe you have older kids and coasters in mind, check out my other Animal Kingdom itinerary planning video. But yeah, this one's going to be dedicated for those youngsters, guys. So before we get into it, I do have a few things to mention. First of all, I purposely waited to do this video because I was waiting to see if Genie Plus was indeed going to change for 2023. Didn't really, so I'm just going to push forward with this video. Again, I'm sorry for the delay, but that's what I was waiting for. Now, for any of these videos, I don't really like itinerary game planning videos because they're kind of not one size fits all, right? Everyone has different things they're coming into and needs and wants and planning and just everything is just kind of different. So I want you to take this video as a guide. Use it as a guide of what my family does over at Animal Kingdom. Take notes. You really, really want to look at the map, whether you can get a physical park map or just go ahead and go on the app. But it's really, really helpful to have a map and look at it while watching these videos or while coming up with your game plan or your itineraries for your park days. But again, the key here is to be flexible because as much planning and, you know, itinerary things you can do, uh, life is life and kids are kids and things are just going to change. But it is really helpful to go into it having that research. The first thing you want to do is you want to get like a top five top 10 must do list per park. Animal Kingdom doesn't have a ton of stuff in it, so maybe just stick to that top five, but it's gonna be really helpful when you watch this video to figure out what your top five needs and wants are, and then you can cater your game plan to fit that. Hopefully uh, that makes sense. Now, Animal Kingdom is known for um, animals that's right there are places throughout the animal kingdom park that you can stop and look at animals now this is not something my family typically does right so i didn't really include a lot of that in this video but if you're interested in checking out the gorillas and the zebras and all the random animals go ahead and make sure you look at those animal trails. Also, there is something called the Wilderness Explorers over at Animal Kingdom. Now I have a whole video just on this, but this is definitely catered towards kids, guys. So if you are going with kids and you're looking for something to kind of fill in the void, something to do in between Genie Plus passes and whatnot, you wanna consider becoming a Wilderness Explorer. So now at the beginning of the park, just as you cross over the bridge, right before you see the giant tree of life, you're gonna see a little outpost area. Go ahead and grab one of these. You are gonna need this throughout the park should you decide to become a wilderness explorer. We will talk more about that in the video, but it's something you can do throughout many trips, throughout Animal Kingdom, or it's something you can kind of push and pull in one day. It is up to you. But if you got kiddos, it's gonna be helpful to have the booklet as you start the park, again, at the entrance. The other thing I wanna let you guys know is I have lots of videos on Animal Kingdom, so make sure you not only watch this itinerary planning video, but you watch my family actually in Animal Kingdom so you can get kind of a real life account of what we can actually accomplish in one day. Now these itineraries are tried and true. We purposely do them in the park to make sure they work, right? To make sure they actually de indeed are something you could do in a given day. But the videos of me actually showing you the rides and showing you the experiences and all those great things might kind of put all of that together. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. Now, you guys ready? Uh, let's get started. So yes, this video is gonna be with Genie Plus. 
Why? Because I think it works. I know it's pricey, it's extra money, but I think it works. And when you have kiddos at hand, I mean, what kids really want to wait in line? And to be honest, adults don't want to wait in line either. So as much as this is about Genie Plus, it doesn't have to be. If you don't want to get Genie Plus, you can follow the same guide, uh, game plan. You just might not get as much done, but this absolutely can work if you don't have Genie Plus as well. So just note that in, you know, that I'm going into it with Genie Plus in mind. So as I said, guys, you have your list of your top five things you want to do at Animal Kingdom. Make sure you think about that as we go through this list. So first thing in the morning, right? You've purchased Genie Plus. It is 7 a.m. or it's almost 7 a.m. You can do two things, right? You can get your Genie Plus pass and you can get your individual Lightning Lane Pass if you're staying at a Disney Resort. If you're not staying at a Disney Resort, then forget that part, you do that later. But for those of you on property at 7 a.m., you get to pick, well, I'm suggesting you pick, between Kilimanjaro Safaris, which is the safari ride with all the animals, or Navi River Journey. Now, obviously Safari Ride is much better than Navi River Journey. Navi River Journey is just like a really calm water ride. It's like four minutes long, it's not a big deal. But I don't know why, but the line gets super duper long. So those are the two things I'm gonna suggest you think about passing at 7 a.m. For individual Lightning Lane, your option is Pandora Flight of Passage. Now this ride isn't necessarily geared towards children. It is very thrill seeking. I do believe there is a height requirement for it. It's virtual reality, guys. But if anyone in your family wants to ride Flights of Passage, you're gonna wanna get that individual Lightning Lane. And I'm gonna suggest you get it before lunchtime. To follow this itinerary, you wanna get Flights of Passage around 11 and 12 o'clock. Hopefully this makes sense. So which one are you gonna pass, right? Navi River Journey or Kilimanjaro Safaris. Now this is my thought on the matter. If you are a resort guest and you are able to go at rope drop, that means a half an hour before the park opens, you're gonna wanna pass Navi River Journey. Why? Because if you are doing rope drop, the first thing I'm gonna send you to do is the safari. So if you're gonna do the safari first thing in the morning at low weight, then you're gonna pass Navi River Journey. If you're gonna enter the park a little bit behind opening, then you are definitely gonna to wanna to pass Kilimanjaro Safaris. Does that make sense? So kind of think about that as we go through this itinerary. If you are gonna do rope drop, if you are early morning people, you're gonna be the first people in the park, don't pass the safari, pass Navi River Journey. If you're gonna be a little bit behind, then go ahead and pass the safari. Hopefully you guys are with me. So. It's time to enter the park, guys. If you're doing rope drop, resort guests, this is what I suggest. Again, 30 minutes before everyone else. You, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna head left and you're gonna go straight to Kilimanjaro Safaris. And again, I am following the park map. So I am gonna pop up maps throughout this video so you guys understand what I'm talking about. I'm trying to avoid the whole human ping pong thing where we're all over the park all day long. We're gonna try to go with the flow a little bit. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, first thing in the morning, you're there at Rope Drop, you're gonna do Kilimanjaro Safaris, no pass. Ready? After you do the safari, you're gonna head a little bit over to the right and you're gonna do the Wildlife Express train. Now this is an actual choo-choo train, chugga chugga choo-choo, right? It's gonna take you to Rafiki's Planet Watch. At this point, we're kind of just killing time. We're kind of just entertaining the kiddos, killing time before our Navi River Journey pass. Now, hopefully you got Navi River Journey for about 10, 30, 11 o'clock because that will get you closer to the Pandora time that I suggested. You see where I'm going here? Your family can do Navi River Journey and then the adults can do Flights of Passage, boom, 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 right after each other. So. As we're killing time, we've already ridden, ridden the safari. We have Navi River Journey kind of on the horizon here. We're gonna go check out Rafiki's Planet Watch. And there you have the affection section, which means you can go pet some dwarf goats. That's right, you can also feed them. You can go check out the animator's experience if you are interested in drawing a Disney character, if you like art, if your kiddos are creative, this could be fun for you. It's also a time killer, right? It takes time to do these activities. So if you don't have the time, 
don't do it. But if you do have the time, I absolutely suggest the Express Train and Rafiki's Planet Watch. Or when you get off the safaris, if you turn right, you can actually do Gorilla Falls, which is one of those animal trails I talked about at the beginning of the video. So again, this is gonna be based on what time it is and what time your Navi River Journey Pass is for. So you've done the safari, you've done the train, maybe you did Gorilla Falls, you're killing time, maybe you found some wilderness explorer things that you can do on the way. But eventually, you're gonna make your way over to Pandora. Now, there's a little pathway, this is what I suggest, there's a little pathway just past the safaris, you kind of walk around where the Lion King show is. Again, I'm gonna show you the map. It's right along the waterway. You wanna take that kind of sneak peek entrance into Pandora for two reasons. A, it's usually less crowded, and there's a bathroom on the way. That's right, kiddos, bathrooms, that goes hand in hand. And because it's on the waterway, there's often a chance you are gonna see a flotilla. A flotilla is a parade in the water. Again, check out my videos because I show you those flotillas. They just happen randomly, guys, throughout the day in the water. You could see Mickey, you could see Pocahontas, you could see Doug and Russell from up. We saw ducktails in the water. If it's Christmas time, you might see Santa. Anyway, the characters are constantly changing. They're in the water. So that's kind of why I like to take that little sneak peek road to Pandora. It's quiet. It's calm, there's a bathroom, and you might go and see a flotilla. So on your way to Pandora, again, it's almost time for Navi River Journey, hopefully. You're gonna explore and see those awesome things which kiddos love. And then you're gonna enter Pandora. Now hopefully two things are happening at this point. You've got your flights of passage, if you are indeed interested in that ride for the older set, right? Those adults, teenagers, older kids. And then hopefully it's time for Navi River Journey. So once you're in Pandora, divide and conquer, do whatever passes you have, ride both rides, do some shopping, get a snack. There are more wilderness explorer things in that area. You're just gonna try to kill time again in the Pandora area, do some pin trading. So depending on what you passed in the morning, remember I told you you had options? If you passed Kilimanjaro Safaris, at this point, you might, once you scan in, I always say you have to scan in twice, then you can get your next pass, right? If you did the safaris, the next thing you might wanna pass is Navi River Journey. Now, if you did rope drop and you did the safaris without a pass, by the time you rode Navi River Journey, right? Again, scanned in two times, you get to pass again. I am suggesting you are gonna pass the Festival of the Lion King, roughly their two o'clock show. So for some people, you might be able to pass, depending on the time of year, you might have been able to pass Safari and then Navi and then Festival of the Lion King. But the reason I'm having rope drop people go to Safari without a pass is because they can use their pass for the Safari later on in the day. Hopefully this makes, makes sense. So by this time, we have done the Safari. We have done the Wildlife Express train or Gorilla Falls. We have done Navi River Journey, possibly Flights of Passage. We've explored a little bit, and now it might be time for lunch. Well, you have kiddos. The lunch you should probably get is Tusker House. Tusker House is the character meal over at Animal Kingdom. Features Donald Duck in his safari gear. He's so cute. He often is meeting with Daisy, Mickey, and sometimes Goofy, sometimes Pluto. They do like to switch it up a bit, but that's your character meal. I absolutely love character meals for kiddos because you're, you're, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're feeding the kiddos and you're meeting those characters. So you do not have to wait in line for them. So as again, I am suggesting you get flights of passage around 11, 12 o'clock. Suggesting you aim for Navi River Journey for about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. To get that at 7 a.m., you may have to keep scrolling on your phone until that time shows up. So you might not get it directly at seven, you might get it at 7.30, it just depends on the day. But you wanna keep scrolling and until the time that you want pops up. Hopefully you guys are with me again. So you did Navi River Journey around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, Flights of Passage around 11 and 12. 
Well, Nina, what time should I eat lunch? Tusker House, around 12.30, 1 o'clock, closer to 12.30. Why? Because I said you should get the Festival of the Lion King show for 2 o'clock. So if you've passed a Lion King show for 2 o'clock, you got to make sure you squeeze in your lunch in between Pandora and the Lion King show, right? So that's why I'm suggesting Tusker House 60 days in advance when you get those dining reservations, aim for about 12.30, 1 o'clock being the latest. So you've eaten, you've taken your pictures, you've gotten your signatures, and you are right there in the area for the Festival of the Lion King. So use the restroom and get in line. The show should be, if you did this correctly, at 2 o'clock. Now, once you've scanned in for that show, right? Magic band scanning in, you get another pass. At this point, I'm suggesting you pass Dinosaur. Now, Dinosaur is a bit of a crazy wild ride. There is some jerking involved. My kids love it. So if you've got a kid who is a little bit more adventurous, consider passing Dinosaur. If you really truly have little littles who are not interested in anything crazy, then you're gonna skip Dinosaur, don't pass that. So you're gonna pass the Finding Nemo show about the 4.30 show, right? But you're still gonna go into the dinosaur area. So no matter if you pass the ride dinosaur or not, after the Lion King show, you're gonna cut back over past the Tree of Life and head towards Dino Land USA. Now, right in front of the Tree of Life, they do something called Winged Encounters. I have it in my video, I absolutely love it. Now you can wait around, you can find the times for winged encounters, you can actually wait around and wait for it to happen. Or, conveniently placed if you just happen to walk past the Tree of Life and winged encounters is going on, stop and watch. It is when they take all these macaws and birdies that they have trained to come and fly all at one time, all around you. It is absolutely amazing and beautiful. And hopefully you don't get pooped on, but I absolutely love this show and it happens in front of the Tree of Life, which conveniently you have to pass on your way to Dino Land USA. So you've had lunch, you saw the Lion King show, now you're headed towards Dino Land USA. Hopefully you've caught Winged Encounters. On your way to Dino Land USA, you're either A, going to do that dinosaur pass, or while you're waiting for dinosaur, or maybe you didn't pass dinosaur, you're going to ride Triceratops Spin. It's like the Dumbo ride, but featuring dinosaurs. And your kiddos just had lunch, and they just saw a show. Maybe they have some energy to burn. That's right. Don't forget to check out the Boneyard. The Boneyard is a kid exercise playground thing over at Dino Land USA. Let them run, let them play, let them get out their energy. Again, you're gonna either gonna ride dinosaur and then do these other things, or you're not gonna ride dinosaur, you're gonna do triceratops spin, you're gonna do the boneyard. If you still have more time to kill, they have carnival games in there. Yes, you have to pay for them, it's about $6 a game, but you can get some really cool prizes, some really cool plushies. I'm gonna pop them up here, cause yes, Nina has them all. Um, but yes, those are the things you're gonna do. So this is again, you killing time before your next pass, but, the kiddos don't have to know you're killing time because you're still having fun. You're still riding things. You're doing Triceratops spin. You're doing the Boneyard. You're playing games all within Dino Land USA. Now, if you are someone who passed Dinosaur and then you rode Dinosaur, again, you get to click in, you get to pass again. Now, hopefully, you can score the Finding Nemo show at 4.30. Now remember, for people who weren't doing Dinosaur, I told you to pass the Finding Nemo show at 4.30. I'm telling the Dinosaur people the same thing. No matter which one you did, you still eventually wanna get the Finding Nemo show at 4.30. This is the final show. So you're killing time in Dino Land USA, you're riding rides, you're doing games, you're exploring. You've passed the Finding Nemo show 4.30. 
it's kind of on the way as we circle around the park. So when it's time for the show, you're gonna exit Dino Land USA, go the other way and do the Finding Nemo musical. I absolutely love this show. It's great for kiddos. There's songs, there's characters, and they've made it shorter. So it's not too long. It's not so long that kiddos just can't sit still. So you're gonna do the Finding Nemo show. After you've clicked in, remember, two times, you get to do another pass. You get to keep clicking in and passing and clicking in and passing as long as there's still passes to get. So, if the Finding Nemo show is about 4.30, that means it's gonna end about five o'clock. You have choices at this point. You can pass something else. Perhaps you wanna do a Cali River Rapids, which is a giant inner tube, wet water rapids ride. Again, for those kiddos, they're a little bit more, you know, thrill seeking than other kiddos. You could do the Adventure Outpost. This is meeting Mickey and Minnie in their safari gear. Or if you were those people that did rope drop safari and you didn't pass the safari, guess what? You can pass the safari now, that's right. So after watching the Nemo show, as soon as you've clicked in, you can pass the safari. So as soon as that Nemo show is over, you can go back to the safari area and ride it twice. This is what my family does. This is what I show you in that video I was talking about. We love riding the safari twice. A, different animals are kind of out at different times. So you've got the morning animals that you saw first thing in the morning, perhaps at like 8.30 or nine o'clock in the morning. And now you're seeing animals towards the end of the day around five o'clock. A lot of times, again, it's in this video, it's totally awesome. The animals know what time it is. Just like anyone else, we get a sense it's time for dinner, it's time to go to bed, it's time to drive home from work. These safari animals are no different. So around that 4.30, 5 o'clock zone, the animals know the safari is closing. So they start walking towards where they're kept in the evening or they walk towards where they normally get fed dinner. If you're lucky, they will stop your you know, safari truck in the middle of the road and you'll just see like a herd of giraffe. Actually, it's a tower of giraffe. You'll see a tower of giraffe crossing the pathway. If you're lucky enough, you'll also see, I think it's called a crash of rhinos, a bunch of rhinos doing the same thing. So again, I love to go in the morning and I love to go in the evening. So if you haven't already passed the safari, this is your chance to do that. So hopefully you guys, you know, you understand this. So five o'clock, you could leave, you could pass characters, you could do the safari, you could do Cali River Rapids, you could do more exploring, you could go see more animal areas, but it's five o'clock. You can do what you want. You can stay around and have dinner. You can wait for when the evening lights come on at the theme park. So, you know, you've got the Tree of Life Awakenings. That's when the Tree of Life kind of gets its sparkle and its glow. The Pandora area will definitely light up because it's of its illuminescence. So yeah, there's things you could do in the evening, but this is basically when Animal Kingdom Park kind of dies down. So you do have options at this point, depending on how tired out you or the kiddos are you can leave go play in your pool you can stay have dinner pass more things you can hop to a different park uh, my family loves to hop to disney springs for dinner at this point again it's it's really up to you you can be flexible but let's get into a things about food right so i told you for lunch you should get tusker house but what if you couldn't or you're not interested in the cuisine or you decide to stay for dinner and you want to know some of nina's options here are some food uh, favorites for kiddos over at Animal Kingdom. So the first one, of course, is Tusker House. That is my suggestion. That is the only character meal at that park. Then there's Rainforest Cafe. Now, I am not a huge fan of Rainforest Cafe. It is a chain restaurant. However, kiddos tend to love it. It's American fare, and you have animatronic safari rainforest characters, which the kiddos just, they just love. They do enjoy that. So for quick service, We've got Flame Tree Barbecue. Now, I happen to love this restaurant. I love the eats over here, but I especially love that you can eat by the water. So when you go to this restaurant and you grab your food, go all the way down the stairs, all the way in the back, and eat by the water. Why? 
Well, remember what I told you happens in the water? That's right, floatillas. So you could absolutely be feeding your kiddos some barbecue while they're watching Mickey and Pluto and DuckTales and whoever kind of float by. I love that restaurant for that specifically. Next is Harambi Market. Now, Harambi Market is near Kilimanjaro Safaris. Now, what I love about this location is there's about three tables by the gate. And what passes the gate? The train, absolutely. If you have a kiddo who loves trains, you might wanna eat at Harambi Market because if you sit there long enough, the Wildlife Express train is gonna go by and that's just, I mean, it's a lot of fun to kind of sit and witness that. Next thing up, you've got Rustafonosaurus, which is in Dino Land, USA. It actually used to be a McDonald's many, many moons ago, but it is, um, it's just a restaurant with your Americana fare featuring burgers, chicken tenders, stuff like that. So if you have a picky kiddo, that's a good option for you. Or there's Pizza Fari, which is, I don't know, it's like towards the beginning of the park on your way to the safari. And that's exactly it, pizza. This video is dedicated to the kiddos and really kiddos, I hear this from families all the time. Um, my kiddo doesn't eat anything but pizza. My kiddo doesn't eat anything but burgers or chicken nuggets. Well, there you go. Pizza Fari and Restafonosaurus is for you, but check out the other menu items because you might like the other restaurants as well. So that's it for food for the kiddos, depending on what you do with your day. Now, there's a few things I did not mention that are 100% at Animal Kingdom. Now, this is when you wanna do your research because if you're interested in these other things, you wanna work that into your game plan. First one it is Expedition Everest. Expedition Everest is a coaster. So it's more for the adults in the group or the older kiddos or the teens if you have a mixed generational group going with you. So yes, Expedition Everest is a coaster that you will indeed want to pass. And the coaster, heads up, does indeed go backwards. So it is not a family friendly coaster necessarily, it is a coaster. Next thing up is Feathered Friends in Flight. I didn't mention this show because, I don't know, it's just not top of my list, but essentially it's a show, so you're gonna sit there and you're gonna watch animal trainers do fun, silly things with birds. Birds are gonna go flying over your head, they're gonna do silly tricks, and whatever the trainers taught those birdies to do. But again, it's a show, so the kiddos will be sitting still. Tough to be a bug. Uh, I hate this experience, <laughs> just gonna warn you. I'm just not a fan, but if your kiddo likes a little weird, a little spooky, just you're looking for something different, uh, it's tough to be a bug is an option for you. I wouldn't bother passing it because no one really goes. It's always pretty empty. It does happen by uh, the tree of life. So yes, you can look into it's tough to be a bug. Um, and then of course, like I said before, I didn't talk about all the trails, all the animal viewing locations. This is something you can do when I said, we're just killing time. We're killing time, we're gonna do the boneyard. We're killing time, we're doing wilderness explorers. We're killing time, we could be looking at the animal areas. Those animal areas are listed in the map. So if animals are indeed uh, what you're looking for, you can 100% do them and fit them in to your schedule. So. Hopefully this was the video you guys were all waiting for. Remember, I do have several videos on Animal Kingdom. I have that original itinerary game plan video for to watch if you have mixed aged, aged kids or you're interested in bigger, better things, make sure you watch that video. And as always guys, I have videos on just Genie Plus. I have updated videos on Genie Plus, what Genie Plus looks like, right now in 2023 i have a video all about it and i have a video including the app you want to know how to use the app knowing what you want to do in the park having a game plan having an itinerary is great that is an excellent start but it is not going to be good if you don't know how to use the app everything is on the app you're going to mobile order on the app you're going to look at the map on the app you're going to see where the characters are located in each park on the app so just make sure you uh, check out my app video as well but again guys i hope this was the video you were looking for you were hoping for i hope you know it helped you out because that is the point one thing i didn't mention was meeting kevin you can meet kevin at animal kingdom 
but all, not all the time. Like we were just there, there was no Kevin. So you definitely wanna pay attention if Kevin is meeting people that day and you can add her to the list. Again, that should pop up on the app, but I don't wanna forget about Kevin because I love her. And if she's out and about, Nina is gonna find her and hang out with her because she's adorable. She's the perfect little mommy. Anyway, with all that said, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped you out. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications, like this video, and comment. Did I do it? Is this the kid-friendly itinerary game planning video you were looking for at Animal Kingdom? I have one more left to do, and that is Epcot. And it is coming soon, guys. I am gonna be filming it right away. So yes, then you should have all four of my itinerary for all four parks videos, plus four of them dedicated to the kiddos, the younger set, the kiddos who wanna focus on characters and parades and shows and not so much coasters. But as always, guys, mahalo for watching. Nina, out. Bye, guys.